In this package is something that I've wanted to test out for a very long time and in today's video I'm basically going to unbox it, use it and give you some honest opinions on it. Now this mystery material is Derwent's battery operated eraser. Now this is something that I've heard a lot about from artists all over social media about its ability to like do your highlights and things. So I just really wanted to give it a go and see if it lives up to its name. And the best way to do this is to just open it up and give it a go. So let's get straight to it. So starting off with opening up the box, we're just gonna... So we have instructions, which can go in the bin. We have the eraser itself, and we have eight little refills. And the real question is, do we have any batteries? And the big reveal is... Uh -oh. No, we do not have any batteries. I need to go and get some. Just hold on. So I got some double A's and triple A's, but looking at it, the double A's are just way too big. So it's going to go straight in with the triple A's. And yeah, that's perfect. Stick it in one in. One, put the other one in. And two. And seal it up. Oh, time for the moment of truth. <gasps> That's so cool. I didn't expect you to have to just like hold the button. <gasps> What's it? It like spins. You see that? Right. Now before I dive into actually using it on some of my drawings, I kind of want to test it out on a scrap piece of paper first. So I've got a pencil here that I'm going to use to just do like a swatch. Right. Now it's time for the moment of truth. What is this like? Oh God. Ayo, that's actually pretty cool. One thing I would say is because obviously the nib spins, when you're doing it, it does kind of like, it pulls you. So it's pulling me this way. I suppose it is gonna have to have some friction on the thing in order to rub stuff out. It's not gonna be super smooth, otherwise it wouldn't work. But yeah, that's actually pretty cool. And something that I've seen lots of other people do is they sharpen the tip. Obviously you can do that with a knife or sandpaper. I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to like bring this out. I'm just gonna try and, how are you supposed to extend the the rubber bit. I want to use more of it. Come on, get out. Oh my God. You see, this is why you have instructions. I'm going to go find them. Right, I'm back with the instructions. To replace erasers, pull out a razor holder from the eraser unit. Pull eraser out of the casing. Insert replacement eraser into casing. Replace eraser holder into eraser unit. Simple enough. So we're going to, I'm assuming the metal bit is the eraser um, holding unit. Oh. Jeez, oh God. Right, that seemed to work. Now let's just pull that out. Oh God. So let's just have it about there. So we've got lots of eraser to play with and then we just pop it back in, I think. Oh, does that work? Let's see. Oh my God. <laughs> I think we need to push it in a bit. Right, hang on. Um, so let's just push that in a bit more. Like so. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit like wobbling out of control. That was not cool. <laughs> Yeah, that seems better. That seems that seems more controllable. Right, so now I'm gonna go and get some sandpaper and a knife to try and test this out. So unfortunately my um, sandpaper seems to have disappeared, but I do have a knife. Hiya. So I'm just gonna like give this a sharpen and see if we can get some more precision from it. I'm not sure how this is gonna work. I'm probably gonna cut my finger here. This is not the safest way to do this. You know what, I'm gonna take it out again and then just have that and then kind of push it against here. So I've got my fingers out the way, which is a much safer option. I mean, that's that's a very pathetic point, but it's pointier than it was. Just move that out of the way. Get out of here. Right, so let's stick this back into the eraser thing, back in here, and then let's see if we can get some more precision. I mean, look at that. Look at it go. I mean, it does very quickly start to thicken up, but that's expected. But that's rubbing it out really well. Oh my goodness. Where has this been all my life? Oh my God. Ha ha the power I now hold. Now I think that is enough testing on a boring swatch of graphite, so let's move straight into using it on some actual drawings. So I want to start by testing it out on this crocodile drawing, but before I do, I found some sandpaper. And because the tip works by it spinning, I'm just going to like hold it onto it at a slight angle and hope that that actually does something. Oh, oh my God. Ah, uh, it's doing something. Oh, Jesus. I mean, it's done something. I think I'll do try a bit more. I mean, it's definitely a sharper point than it was before I did that. So yeah, I reckon that's the way forwards. So now that I'm armed with this nice sharp point, I'm gonna go in and just see what I can do here and just take some off. Just bearing in mind that it is gonna try and pull me downwards when I'm doing this, so wish me luck. I reckon I need to push it in a bit further actually. Uh, right. See, that's relatively easy to change actually. That's pretty cool. So back into it. Oh my goodness. Just bringing out those scales. 
Yeah, so what I'm doing here is I'm just really gently tapping it. And because it's rotating so quickly, it removes the graphite really quickly as well. So I'm just being very delicate, just kind of tapping it here, not, not holding it down because that would just remove too much. So I'm just kind of really emphasizing the highlights that are already there. I'm not really adding anything to it because I was actually pretty happy with how this was looking anyway. It's just giving it that extra level of pop because it's gonna make those highlights whiter, it's gonna bring up that contrast. So it's gonna give it more pop, as I just said. Now, one thing that I am starting to notice is that it's not the most comfortable thing to hold, if I'm being honest. It's quite awkward. And because you do have to press the button down in order to use it, it, yeah. I'm not quite sure. I reckon it's something I might be able to get, oh God, might be able to get used to. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go and resharpen it using the sandpaper again. Just move that out of the way. So again, just holding it at an angle. And then as I'm pushing the button down, just gently touch it to the paper like so. And then boom, nice and sharp again. Come back to the drawing, go back into the teeth again. Just bringing out those highlights. Now on camera, it might be actually hard to tell if I'm actually doing anything. But in real life, it's actually making quite a bit of difference. It is kind of bringing those highlights out. And yeah, I can also use it just to kind of just jot in a couple more scales here and there as well, just to add in more fine details, give it that extra level of complexity. I don't know whether I might have taken a bit too much off the bottom there, because now it looks a bit less contrasting, but hey ho, still looks pretty cool. You know what, I reckon I'm gonna leave that now just in case I remove a bit too much. So yeah, let's go and move on to a different drawing. Now this is a much bigger pencil drawing I did with black lead pencils. Now black lead pencils are actually a lot harder to rub out because they have a higher percentage of graphite in them opposed to the filler that you normally get with normal graphite pencils. So they are a lot darker. So let's see how the um, electrical razor fares against this drawing. And yeah, before going in again, I'm just gonna sharpen it again here just so it's nice and accurate. Now it was definitely the case that when I was drawing this, there were some highlights that I wanted to be brighter, but that couldn't really be done because the thing that I was using was a touch story rubber pencil and this just didn't seem to be able to do it. So let's see if this electric eraser can do any better. There we go. And I tell you what, it's doing its job. Look at it go. It is brightening up the highlights. God damn. <laughs> Look at that. This is good. Let's just do this one down here as well. I could very much go over the top here. I'm just gonna try and keep it at a minimum. Just lift off just that little bit just to bring out those very high, the very bright highlights even, sorry. Yeah. But that's really good, I'm really happy with that. So I then went around pretty much the entire piece, um, just really bringing out those harsher highlights that I couldn't before. And especially on the Chewbacca with the kind of burr texture around his face, it was really helpful with doing this. And yeah, it is quite minimal, but it really does make a difference. Now whilst doing this, I was also having an experiment with which way is the best way to hold it, with your index finger on the top or with your thumb pressing the button at the bottom. And to be honest, I think neither are more comfortable than the other. It's just kind of nice to have a switch up every so often. But if you ever do get one, um, you can have a play with which one works best for you. Now, if you're like me, you're probably wondering if you can use this electric eraser on colored pencil drawings. And this right here is my colored pencil drawing of the Lego McLaren F1 car. And I'm actually pretty happy with how it's looking. So I don't really want to alter it too much, but there are a couple of things that I could do with touching up. So I'm just gonna give it a go with this electric eraser. So let's get straight to it. So I do just really want to try and brighten up this um, edge here. So I'm just gonna give it a little go. And you know what? That has done a pretty good job. So I think I'm just gonna come up here as well. God damn. I think the conclusion is that this definitely does work on colored pencils as well. This is just a legendary material that I don't get why I didn't use it sooner. Look at this thing go. Power I now hold in my hands. So the conclusion for this video, as I'm sure you can probably guess, is that I do really like this thing and I definitely wish that I had it sooner. And if you are thinking about getting one that I definitely would, and I'll leave a link down in the description so you can get this exact one that I used today. Now there obviously are some downsides. It's not the most comfortable thing to hold in the world. And I do think that some people have complained about the fact that it's quite noisy, but honestly, it's really not. <laughs> and yeah, with that said, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and found some things in it useful. And with that said, I'll see you next time with another arty video.